Oh man, I think this is gonna be the last stop of the day. Unfortunately, we're running out of light. It's been a hell of a great day. We saw a lot of cool stuff, but this is a good spot to stop for today. And across from us, that's the Ching Li Formation. Those are fluvial channels. It looks a lot like the Cayenta, and that up there is the Wingate, which looks a lot like the Navajo. So if you've seen the video on the dinosaur tracks in that Cayenta and Navajo cliff, man, it looks a lot like this, but it's totally different formations, different unit. We're now on the east side of the Moab Fault. That was on the west side. So this stuff is totally differently um, elevated relative to what's over there. What's really interesting at this outcrop is if you look across the river, you see most of those ridges in the Chinle go roughly horizontally across. Those are ancient river channels, probably braided streams, definitely sandy, probably looked a lot like that when they were flowing. So those are individual channel bodies separated by floodplain. And there's the Aeolian Wingate. That's Jurassic, that's Triassic. There's an unconformity between them. So again, here's an unconformity like we saw in the San Juan Basin where there's Jurassic separated from Triassic by an unconformity. And remember, I told you it was regional. Here's the unconformity again. So it is regional. But what on earth is going on down there? Look at those really low angle beds. You can see them all the way across. And they continue all the way under the talus slope. Look at that right there. Those are angled much differently than the horizontal channel bodies above. What is going on there? Why are they all angled the same way? Um, from a distance, you might be tempted to say they're deltaic forsets. Um, you can maybe interpret them as point bar deposits that have inclined heterolithic stratification like that. Fortunately, they crop out on this side of the road, so we can actually go take a look at them and see what on earth they are. Let's do just that, because there's an interesting story to be told with them. So we're going to go look at the outcrop, right where that guy's about to drive. There it is and we're gonna see what those deposits are. Sometimes you can't tell what you need to from afar. You gotta go put your nose up against the rocks. Let's go put our nose on the rocks. Well, here we are looking at the equivalent of those angled rocks over here. Man, they are a mess. There's not really any bedding. Um, you don't really see anything. It's just kind of a big purple and white and tan mess of stuff. Or is it? Let's take a look a little bit closer because there's an interesting observation we can make in some of these things. And if you look really closely, we gotta be careful because we're right up against the road here. So <laughs> hopefully I won't kill myself. But if you start looking at these things, you can start recognizing there's vertical shapes to them. They seem to go straight down. Um, some of them seem to angle but you can almost convince yourself you're seeing big vertical burrows. Huh, all right, well, this is kind of not a great outcrop. Let's take a look some more and see what else we see, because we might be onto something here. Here are some cross sections of those things. Here's that nice big round cross section. Um, there's another one, big round cross section. These look a lot like some of the small invertebrate burrows we saw with the dinosaur tracks. But look at the size of them. They're huge. Like, I could put my fist in that thing. Aha. Uh -huh. You know what? This looks a lot like the crayfish burrows that we looked at in the ditch in Colorado County, Texas. And in fact, the going theory with these, there's actually two competing theories. One is that they are indeed crayfish burrows. It's three, three theories. Nobody expects the third theory. So one theory is that they're crayfish burrows. The reason that is, is because they've got a morphology almost identical to modern crayfish burrows. Steve Hasiotis came up with this back in the early 90s. There's even been fossil crayfish, or something like them, found in burrows like this down in Arizona in the Chinle equivalent rocks. The competing theory is that these are actually root casts of giant horsetails. Um, horsetails like the same kind of environment as crayfish. They're like wet soils, ponds, um, shorelines of lakes and rivers. It's the same environment. Um, horsetails have roots that create long, simple, burrow-shaped structures like this. 
the third theory is that these are burrows by crustaceans, decapod crustaceans with claws, pincers, and all that. But they weren't crayfish, not proper crayfish. They were a type of decapod, like a freshwater lobster that's not in technically the same family as a crayfish. If you study these guys, that's very important to you. You and I would look at these things and say, oh, it's a crayfish. A Cajun would look at it and say, oh boy, it's gumbo. But if you're a specialist in decapods, and especially crayfish, you would look at it and say, well, it's technically not a crayfish. So that's the third theory, is that it's something that looks like a crayfish, but well, it's not technically a crayfish. Regardless, ultimately, of whether these are roots or crayfish burrows, they're telling us environmentally the same exact thing. They're telling us they're standing water, they're telling us the water table goes down, seasonally at least, and whatever the organism is, whether it's a plant with roots or a crayfish with gills, it's got to burrow down deep and completely churns up the sediment through its burrowing or rooting activity, but it's boring down to get to the water table, seasonal water table. So whether it's a plant or a crayfish, environmentally it's telling us the same thing. Now, to get back to why that's important for across the way, significant because these things whether they're plants or crayfish burrow vertically straight down maybe they kind of angle one way or the other but generally it's down vertical deposits generally form you know roughly horizontally unless you're in a delta or something like that or a point bar but if you look closely at those through binoculars you'll see that the burrows or the roots are angled they're not going straight down they're actually coming I'm trying to do it with my finger like that so they're kind of at an angle all of them this way and they're kind of in a fan shaped geometry so in other words they're more angled down and they're more vertical towards the top of that succession which suggests that those deposits were filling in a low area and then rotating down then filling in some more then rotating down and filling in some more rotating down that's significant to us here in Moab because there are salt walls. Now, a salt wall, that's a whole other topic for a totally different discussion. But what's important to know is salt in the subsurface behaves like a fluid. As sediment piles on top of it, if you have a layer of salt, it's happens to the Gulf Coast all the time. Um, down in Louisiana, they have what's called islands. You might have heard of Tabasco. Tabasco is from Avery Island, Louisiana. That's because there's a big salt dome. So in other words, there's Jurassic salt all along the Gulf Coast with enough sediment coming and dumping in. It pushes down that salt and the salt squirts up. It's like stepping on a tube of toothpaste that goes, except it's pushing up through solid rock and sediment. So the salt domes in the Gulf Coast push up and actually they're really good for oil and gas exploration because they drag the sediment up with them and the oil and gas flow into those sediments and get trapped against the salt. So it's a pretty good tactic if you're looking for oil and gas in the Gulf Coast. Find a salt dome, drill a bunch of wells around the ring, uh, around the rim of the salt dome, you're likely to hit something. It's been productive for well over a century doing just that. Um, Tabasco, by the way, is made in Avery Island because they use the salt from the dome to pack on the fermentation vats that they ferment the Tabasco in. Um, so it's got to use. It's kind of interesting. The same thing was happening here in Moab in the Triassic. So salt was getting squished up. As it's squishing up, it's dragging sediment with it, but it's also creating low spots between the salt walls. So one idea is that this is an area that was subsiding and there was a salt dome somewhere back here pushing its way to the surface prior to the rest of the Chin Li being deposited. During this early phase, it was pushing up this area with the crayfish burrows or root cast was sagging down between a salt wall here and maybe another salt wall down the road. If only there was a way to test that. Science is testing an idea after all. Wait, I got it. Let's drive down the road and see if these deposits dip back up on the other side as if they're hitting the flank of another salt dome. That would be scientific and that might prove our hypothesis or at least not disprove our hypothesis let's go drive and see let's do it in real time maybe that might be kind of fun just see how far we drive before we hit the other side of this sag that's filled in with crayfish burrows or root casts in this pond deposit all right let's do it okay so we're going to start driving and see how long it takes us to find the opposite side of that little 
Triassic Pond. There's the strata dipping to the east. And we're just gonna cruise along and see how far we go. Real-time geoscience, the wonders of modern technology. Look at that, off to the right, there's more of these burrow deposits. Wow, there's a lot of nice burrows there. Here's more burrows off to the right. We're still in the pond deposit. And it's crazy because some of those beds are just totally destroyed. You don't really see individual burrows. You just see a giant pile of completely churned sediment. Coming up here in the light on the right, that's more of a pond deposit. You can actually see some bedding in there. Um, so you get a sense that there's actual discrete episodes of sediment fill, but it's still just churned up by burrows, totally chewed up. Look at that. I mean, you can't really see any individual laminate, just burrowed. Still there, off on the right, up in the top, you kind of see the kind of purples and greens. Just literally millions of these trace fossils. And again, if you want to jump up and down and swear that they must be horsetail roots, that's fine. I don't think they are, but it's going to give you the same environmental signal. Look at this off on the right, all still just completely churned. Sorry, my windshield's kind of a mess. That's what happens when you drive over three states in two days. You tend to catch a lot of bugs in the windshield. So off on the left, we can't really see the deposits anymore. They're covered in talus, but fortunately off to the right, there they all still are. And trust me, you can still see individual burrows. I should have filmed some of these for the up close. These are a lot better actually. I might come in and shoot a couple of these on the way out just to include them to convince you that they really are burrows. Because the ones I shot, I mean, it's, you have to kind of almost take it on faith. Uh-oh, what's that up on the upper left on the other side of the river in the sun? That almost looks like that's our beds dipping back up. So we've been driving two and a half minutes now. We've been going eh, about 40 miles an hour. So that's not even a couple of miles we've gone. And we've been kind of meandering, winding. So it's a very small area. It's maybe only about a mile and a half across. But we predicted if it's a salt-induced pond with salt walls on either side, kind of causing water to pool up between the salt walls, it should dip back up on the other side. And kind of makes sense. You have a salt wall pushing up on one side, dragging the sediment up and forcing it down in the middle. The same should be true on the other side. And look at that in the sun and everything. Oh man, that's pretty spectacular. So again, take a look in the upper left, below the wind gate, those channels are horizontal. The stuff that's dipping from the shade to the sun here, the ledge former, right in the middle, that is strongly, strongly dipping. It's not horizontal like the channels. So we'll jump out and take a look at it in a second. Just gotta find a place to park. But wow, how about that? That's pretty compelling, if I do say so myself.